Hey guys, um, as I mentioned in the last video, I thought I would do a, um, a video for y'all of the palette that I use. So the different color paints and brands even that I use for painting. Um, I've always appreciated it when other artists have shared that. I love looking at their paints, how they do their palette. And uh, so I thought I would do that for you guys. So um, here we go. I'm gonna take you over to my um, just where I paint and show you how I store it and the different things that I use. So this is the table that I work at and I have a drawer here of um, my small tubes of paint and then in this drawer <coughs> excuse me I felt that coming on um, my larger tubes just keep those here and I keep them basically in the order that I do on my palette so from um, warm colors to cool colors and the same in this drawer even though it looks like a hot mess it's kind of my whites to yellows to reds blues greens random stuff stuffed all in the back there and uh, this is, uh, I keep my turp here, I've got a travel can and larger can and then just random cans to pour stuff in and brushes, keep there. This is the jar that I use. These are my most used brushes and this is just random stuff in the back and my easel and uh, other just piled up random stuff. I did not straighten up at all for you guys, I just didn't. Uh, Going by the flow, going, going just, you know, how it is. So this is what I keep my oil paints in. It's called a, I think it's called Palette Garage. And if y'all are interested, I'll put a link um, to it. It is covered in paint. It comes clear and it has two ends and I've already popped one end off. So I can take this out with one hand, hopefully. Um, and I store this thing in the freezer when I'm done with my paints and it keeps the paints nice and moist. And then it comes with this little plastic, um, hoping I can do this without messing my paints up. Usually it's a two handed job here. <clears throat> All right, so you can see it's just a tube that comes in and then it's got this little kind of tray thing and you just stick it in there and I pop it in. You can put it in the refrigerator or the freezer. Sometimes I go long chunks of time without painting and so I really want my paints to stay nice and fresh. They're a little hard or firm when they come out of the freezer but then they just are nice and lush. This has been in the freezer. The only paint that I squeezed out fresh this morning was this white um, but this has been sitting out a little while and you can see how uh, nice everything looks. So I do my palette. I've changed it up a little bit over the years um, but this is Pretty much how I do it. I mean, it, it always stays like this. Even my travel palettes, I lay out like this. I used to have my white over here to the left, but then I found that I use it a lot, so it's nice to just have that in the middle, and then have my warm colors on the left and my cool colors on the right. Um, and I just lay it out in the order of. I always have it laid out the same. Um, it's kind of like a piano. You want to be able to know where the notes are and what to play, where my hand just kind of automatically goes to things. I don't clean this thing off either very often. You can see like um, here, this paint right here is kind of getting chunky and old. When it builds up too much, I'll use my palette knife and clean everything off. It's so fun to have clean palette and fresh. Um, but for the most part, I just leave it. Maybe about once a year it gets cleaned off. So the colors I use, this is uh, a lemon yellow right here next to a um, just cad yellow. And this one's a little cooler and this one's a little warmer. And um, I use different brands of paints. I will usually go Ultra um, Utrecht or Gamblin. And then I also love this Blue Ridge. Um, it's a guy who makes paints and they're amazing. There's a couple colors that I prefer other brands from like the um, burnt. Oh, I have a color that I don't have out here. I just realized that's my absolute favorite color. Burnt Santa. I could not live without that. Okay, so those are some of the brands you'll see the um, from the tubes what they are and um, 
I have them in different brands of different colors. So, um, so let me get back to this. The Cad Yellow, Cad Lemon Yellow. I use um, just a, a regular Cad. Cadmium. Oh, that too doesn't say. What, what do I use? Cadmium Yellow Deep. I'm having a hard time finding the area. Cadmium Yellow Deep. The next I have a um, raw sienna. Love raw sienna. Then I have a burnt sienna right here. I could not live without burnt sienna. It's one of my favorite colors. It's a great mixer. You can do um, get a nice black or dark color mixing burnt sienna and ultramarine or cobalt blue. Um, I just feel like this is a I don't know. I would pick this color over um, any of my reds if I had to have just one on the palette. Ooh, another tube I don't have out in my list here is um, cadmium orange. I don't use it a ton, but when I want an orange quickly, that's what I'll use. You can also neutralize, make a nice neutral colors with that and um, cobalt blue or ultramarine. And then I have a few different reds, cool and warm reds, and sometimes this just depends on what I put out. Uh, cadmium red pale, it's hard to replace that. Um, nice warm red, that's cadmium pale. This right here is um, quinacridone rose. I don't have these in the right order. Let me get this. Quinacridone rose. It's a nice um, kind of medium pinkish color. It's really nice. Alizarum crimson, a little bit darker if you need to make a nice dark purple or neutral or black. That's a good color um, to add. And cadmium red pale. Titanium white. I love Blue Ridge's um, titanium white. There's, it's got just this creamy mix to it that I love mixing that color that titanium white with that paint consistency with other paints. I absolutely love it. Then right here on my palette, I put my gunk, my leftover paint that I scrape up from the palette. It's nice to have a neutral like that sometimes. Sometimes it's warmer, sometimes it's cooler. Sometimes it sits there forever and gunks up and I can't use it. Um, sometimes it'll be a nice purple. It's just kind of fun and it's nice to have that neutral base right there. Next is Cerulean Blue and um, that's kind of irreplaceable too. So, then I have cobalt blue and ultramarine. Um, a lot of times people don't have both on there, but I just find that I cannot just have ultramarine. I love cobalt blue. In fact, I think I would pick cobalt over ultramarine if I had to pick a blue. It's just a really great blue. Of course, the ultramarine is darker, so if you need to have some darker mixes um that's what i use and then i have some just random greens sometimes i almost always have a viridian green on there it's just nice um if i need to neutralize something with um, cadmium red and viridian you can make a nice black or a neutral gray that's really pretty and either push it to the warm or the cool side and then i think right now i may have chrome oxide here Sometimes I'll put emerald green. I think I may have a squeeze of that right here. And then chrome oxide. It's just nice to sometimes have a green on there to either neutralize something or to have a base green but then um, add colors to it. I, I never use um, greens out of the two for greens on my painting, like grass or trees. What I do use though, my favorite thing for greens, I have um, here burnt umber. So burnt umber. And a little squeeze of ivory black. I always just leave little squeezes of those, not, not a ton, because a dab will do you, or at least for me. And those are the best colors to mix with one of these two yellows to make greens. They're more natural. Um, if I just use a, if I try to even mix, I don't know, I just love those mixes for greens. Um, I don't usually tend to like real bright greens in my painting for stems of flowers or leaves or grass or trees. So that's a tip there that I always use. And then over here I have a little squeeze of 
um, Venetian red. Venetian red. Um, I and that stuff, man, it is strong and goes forever. So totally, just a little dab of do you for that. I like Venetian red to make purples. I don't use purple a lot in my paintings, but um, maybe if there's a shadow of a white, maybe a white shirt or a white cup, Venetian red and one of the blues makes a great um, purple. And sometimes I'll even mix it up, mix a nice purple that I like with the Venetian red and one of my blues and put a dab right here of it so I just have it for a neutral. Um, and then other times I do put this magnesium, what's it called? Magnesium violet. Oh, no. I always call it magnesium. It's not magnesium. It's now that I'm reading the, the uh, label. M manganese? I don't even really know how to say it, but it's a nice purple. Um, it's not real, like, in-your-face purple. And I still usually have to tone it down. I would not use this straight out of the tube. And actually, I haven't used it in a long time. I've been mixing my Venetian red and blue together. Um, and the other tip that I wanted to tell y'all as far as my paints, what I use for cleaning my brushes, I think I got this tip from Carol, um, goodness gracious, I just forgot her name, uh, Carol Maureen, is Murphy Oil Soap, the stuff to clean your floors. And I keep a little of that in this, um, but I won't be able to get this off one-handed. Uh, and just a little Tupperware thing. How about I just tell you that? And I'll dip my brush in it. And usually we'll just rub it like this on my sink. Dab it like that. I rinse it. Dab it again. Do that until I'm not seeing a lot of um, paint come rinsing out of the, the brush. So that is my quick um, palette. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.